On July 27, 1953, the Korean War Armistice Agreement was signed. The agreement, written in three languages, was signed by Mark W. Clark, Commander-in-Chief of the United Nations Command, Kim Il-sung, Marshal of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army, and Peng De Hui, Commander of the Chinese People's Volunteers. In addition, one representative from the UN Command and the Korean People's Army, each were also present and signed the agreement. In June 1951, as the front lines stalled around the 38th parallel, the UN and communist forces began to seek a ceasefire. UN command accepted a proposal from the communists and began ceasefire talks at Kaesong on July 10, 1951. According to data from the National Institute for Unification Education, then South Korean President Lee sung man opposed the ceasefire, insisting on the withdrawal of Chinese troops and North Korea's disarmament and did not sign the armistice agreement. The terms of the agreement comprise five articles and 63 sections on the military demarcation line and demilitarized zone, specific measures of demilitarization and cessation of hostilities, measures concerning POWs, recommendations to the governments of both sides, and an appendix. As the armistice agreement was signed after two years and a total of 159 plenary sessions between the UN and communist forces, the Korean War, which had lasted for 1,129 days, was finally brought to a ceasefire. It has been 70 years since the armistice agreement was signed. What has happened between the two Koreas during those 70 years? I was curious, has there ever been a ceasefire system that has lasted as long as the Korean Peninsula? I decided to ask a Korean war expert about it. But it's been a long time for 70 years, and it's been a long time for other cases. It's not 1차 세계대전에 같은 경우에도 보면은 그 공피에너라고 하는 휴전 협정 체결된 후에 베르사유 평화 지역 체결되는데 7개월에서 뭐한 1년 정도 밖에 되지 않아요. 그리고 또그 2차 세계전 그 태평양 전쟁을 정지시킨 
그 무조건 항복 문서가 1945년 9월 2일 날 체결되고 그다음에 이것을 평지로 전환하기 위해서 샌프란시스코에서 대일 평화 조약이라는 게 체결되는데 그게 51년 9월에 한 6년쯤 되는 것이죠. 그것도 2차 세계 전 이후에 비교적 휴전의 기간이 긴 기간이에요. 정전의 기간이. 그런데 이렇게 70년까지 계속된 사례는 존재하지 않는다. 아, 뭐 최초의 사례다. 이렇게 얘기할 수 있겠죠. However, this is not to say there have been no efforts made for lasting peace. A ceasefire is literally just a pause from the war, so there was a need to end the Korean War once and for all. The Armistice Agreement stipulates that the two sides consult on a peaceful settlement of the Korean Peninsula issue within three months. Preliminary talks were held from October 26, 1953. But they were suspended due to mutual disagreements. On April 26, 1954, delegates from a total of 19 countries, including the two Koreas, the US, the Soviet Union, and UN member states, gathered in Geneva to formalize the end of the Korean War and to agree on a plan for the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula. However, the differences between the two Koreas were not resolved and the 1954 Geneva Conference ended without any conclusions. In September 1975, U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger suggested a conference be held among all the parties directly involved, namely the two Koreas, the U.S. and China, to replace the Korean War Armistice with a new system. And finally, on December 9, 1997, in Geneva, Switzerland, Four party talks were held involving the two Koreas, the US, and China. However, North Korea maintained its stance that the North Korea US peace agreement must be discussed first, and US troops must withdraw from South Korea, which led to the end of the four party talks in August 1999, after six rounds. From August 2003, six party talks, including the two Koreas, the US, China, Japan, and Russia, were held over the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. However, the talks were suspended in 2009 after North Korea conducted a series of nuclear tests and missile launches. Ending the Korean War was discussed again in earnest during the 2018 Inter-Korean Summit. On April 27, 2018, the leaders of the two Koreas agreed to declare the end of the war and convert the armistice into a peace agreement this year. However, with the 2019 North Korea-US summit held in Hanoi ending without a deal, the relationship between the two sides returned to a stalemate, and this also affected inter-Korean relations. In September 2021, at the 76th session of the UN General Assembly, it was once again proposed to declare an end to the war but no declaration has yet been made. A state of ceasefire that has lasted for 70 years. We are living in time and space where the war is not over. What do the ambassadors of the countries that participated in the Korean War think while looking at the Korean Peninsula still in armistice? We must never forget the devastation of war and those who fought for freedom, and Norway stands, uh, continue to stand by, together with allies, to defend uh, the values of uh, peace, international law, and human rights. Never again. Um, I think um, we need to uh, study the history of the Korean War in order to make everything possible to avoid its repetition. And so, uh, my government uh, supports uh, the unification of Korea. No one can bring peaceful situation, lasting peace and stability through war and forceful action. The only solution is peaceful dialogue and talk between the nations. This is the only solution. Turkey is supporting uh, ROC, Republic of Korea, in every field and our determination and solidarity with Korean people and Korean government is more uh, stronger than ever.
Italy, Korea, and other countries share many values, freedom, democracy, rule of law. But these values should not be taken for granted. You have to fight for it. As now is proven in Europe after the Russian aggression to Ukraine. As the ambassadors mentioned, there are wars and conflicts going on all over the world. Not only that, various issues such as climate change, pandemic, food secret issues are shaking the international order. Commemorating the 70th anniversary of the Korean War armistice in 2023, are we standing at the cusp of transitioning into a new world order? I wondered what the ambassadors were thinking about this issue. I would say more of um, a polycrisis area, where um, one crisis feeds into an ecosystem of uh, different um, crises, which divides the world's attention, which does not allow us to have a more holistic and substantial response to the challenges um, in the world. We see an uh, energy crisis, a green transition, and a changing global economy. And these are developments that affect the relations between nations and regions. And we see a tendency to emphasize more on regional economic cooperation rather than global economic cooperation. Well, it's, it's multifaceted, uh, but it is a new world. We just published a new uh, foreign and security policy, which is a serious reading uh, in face of the aggressions that we are seeing. We are upping dramatically our uh, defense uh, expenditure. We are reaching out to friends, not just in Europe, or all, all over the world, including uh, Korea. And we see uh, how the Korean president is, uh, uh, has decided to participate in the NATO summit in Europe. Uh, so we are doing things, uh, those who believe in the same set of values are coming together and defending staunchly for whatever it takes um, the values that we believe in. I think this is the right course. So why is the world undergoing this change? I decided to ask experts about this.트럼프 그랬다가 이제 다시 지금은 돌아가려고 하는데 또 쉽지만은 않고 어 이런 어떤 미국 패권 국가 미국의 어떤 정책 변화 지금 세계의 격변을 만들고 있는 세계의 국제 질서가 꽤 어지럽게 보이고 어 복잡해 보이게 만드는 가장 중요한 원인이 아닌가. 현재 이렇게 국제 질서에 좀 영향을 주는 요인들이 어떤 것이 있다고 보시는지. 첫 번째는 미중 전략 경쟁이라고 하는 요인을 꼽고 있는 것 같고요. 이 미중 전략 경쟁의 특징은 미국과 중국이 물론 주요 행위자이기는 하지만 둘 사이의 양자 게임만은 아니고 이렇게 지역이나 다자 차원의 게임도 같이 진행한다라고 하는 차원에서 우리가 전략 경쟁이라고 하는 용어를 같이 쓰고 있는 것 같습니다. 두 번째는 우리가 이제 겨우 벗어나는 조짐을 보이고 있습니다만은 코로나 19가 세계 질서에 미친 영향 또한 적지 않다라고 하는 얘기들을 많이 하고 있습니다. 세 번째로는 최근에 우리가 여전히 현재 진행형인데요. 우크라이나 러시아 전쟁의 영향을 무시할 수 없다라고 하는 것이고요. 그동안에는 이렇게 수면에 잠복해 있던 갈등 요인들이 이런 전쟁이라고 하는 어떤 직접적인 갈등으로 또는 분쟁으로 어, 표면화되었다라고 하는 거 어, 의미를 하나 부여할 수 있을 테고요. 또 하나는 The professor mentioned US China strategic competition as one of the reasons for the change in the global order. But what exactly does the U.S.-China strategic competition mean? 
The first National Security Strategy Report, which was released under the Trump administration, formalized the view that the U.S.-China relationship was transitioning from the former strategic partnership to strategic competition. The U.S.-China rivalry started from trade disputes in 2018, conflicts over future technologies such as 5G in 2019 and 2020, and even expanded to trading blame over COVID-19. Even after the Biden administration took office in 2021, the U.S.-China rivalry and conflict has continued in various fields. The reason the U.S. and China have become strategic rivals is due to China's rapid rise. China has risen faster than expected, which is threatening the international influence of the U.S. on a scale and level that it has never faced before. Will the U.S.-China strategic competition, by any chance, bring about another form of division? So some people are saying that we are now heading towards to a new Cold War era. Do you think that countries are becoming more confrontational these days? Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, Russian aggression against uh, Ukraine, in many ways there are, there are similarities. Um, and in, in both cases, I think uh, there's a contradiction between uh, people and countries who would like to live in a democratic society and autocratic uh, regimes uh, that, uh, by definition, also become aggressive. Whether it's a Cold War, I understand why some people uh, talk about a new Cold War. I don't think much positive comes necessarily from using that language. But it is time uh, for those who believe in a common values, common values based on democracy, human rights, respect for international law, to come together and stand together. 신냉전이라고 하는 표현은 표면상으로는 맞는 표현이라고 딸수 있을 것 같아요. 미국과 중국이라고 하는 두 개의 컨트롤 타워 밑에서 어 어떤 세계 체제가 재편되고 있는 현상이 나타나고 있는 건 맞는 것 같은데. 저는 이걸 꼭 신냉전으로 보고 싶지는 않아요. 왜냐하면 냉전이라는 건 정말 소련이 있고 미국이 있고 이 독일 체제 하에서 정치적 경제적으로 완전히 분리가 됐었거든요. 이 독일가. 근데 지금은 사실 이미 세계화가 진행된 상황에서 독일가 완전히 분리가 되기는 저는 어려운 상황이라고 봐요. 또 그것 때문에 최근에 미국의 블링컨 국무장관이 또 중국을 방문해서 상호 간의 입장을 서로 확인한 부분도 있었거든요. 그래서 겉으로 보이기에는 미중 갈등이 되니까 신냉전이라고 표현할 수는 있지만 우리가 냉전 때 겪었던 것처럼 진짜 가트나 IMF 체제가 한쪽에 있다면 다른 한쪽에 뭐 코메콘이나 바르샤바 조약기구가 있는 이런 식의 그런 냉전 체제 쪽으로는 가지 않을 것이다 라고 저는 보고 있습니다. Inter-Korean tensions have also been rising. The two Koreas have been butting heads and taking a confrontational stance for over a year. Amid these circumstances, wouldn't it be even more difficult to reach permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula? What about another armed conflict? Or in the worst case scenario, what if another war occurs? What kind of effort could countries make to take away war and even the possibility of war on the Korean Peninsula and around the world to achieve peace? I thought this was the most important question I needed to ask the ambassadors. How can countries work together to maintain peace in the world? But I think countries can contribute. They can contribute with um, support to sustainable development uh, in uh, health and education. Also support uh, the development of democracy and gender equality mm. and uh, more women in peace uh, processes. And also support, uh, you know, uh, where displaced uh, persons and also help uh, countries that are in conflict and being fragile. As we are an interconnected world, 
we cannot separately act. We don't have common agendas. Mm -hmm. For this uh, common agenda will, will happen if and only if all of us come together and understand each other and work closely. Confrontation is not a uh, solution. It will not uh, bring a lasting uh, solution. So uh, working closely and understanding each other and dialoguing is uh, the, 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 the way and the solution that all of us can play a game with this interconnected world. Um, this is the only way, working together and being aware and um, supporting um, the efforts of each country um, under a rules-based um, international order. This is the only way that we can holistically and substantially um, solve um, the current crisis. It's not always an easy path because there are national interests and uh, countries, uh, states, they work within their own context. But at the end of the day, it's very important to continue pushing for a rules-based international order. Through the dialogue, through the diplomacy, but definitely not, not by the means of war. Our great leader, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, said that a war, if it is not defending your homeland, it is a murder. So there should not be wars, it should be dialogue, peace processes, and through the diplomacy. We should not forget that around the world there are so many conflicts going on. If I think of Africa, there are still many places that, where there are internal wars, civil wars, or border wars, and so on, and we don't pay enough attention to them. We should not think that this is um, inevitable, or it's natural, or there is nothing to do. We have to work more, we have to find a way for a, a, a peaceful coexistence. That doesn't mean everybody must agree, or they should be, uh, we should see the world in the same way. But the differences can be mediated, can be accepted, can be, can be in a way managed. I think the United Nations is one important uh, part of this. The United Nations offers us a set of values and mechanisms to uphold international law. So what Korea is doing and what Denmark is doing, uh, going all in to work actively within that framework is important. Uh, we should also be looking at, at uh, the bigger picture. For example, climate change, mm. inflation, um, um, the um, the devastation of, of uh, agricultural lands, um, address these before they become uh, reasons for, for, uh, uh, for war and, and uh, conflict. On the 70th anniversary of the armistice, Korean war veterans, now in their 90s, visited Korea at the invitation of the Ministry of Veteran Affairs. The war memorial of Korea has a place of remembrance where the names of fallen U.S. soldiers are inscribed. Some of the veterans, overcome with emotion, were unable to leave the scene for some time, as the memories of the war came flooding back. เราสึกดีใจมากแล้วก็ภูมิใจมากแล้วก็ได้เห็นความเจริญก้าวหน้าของเกาหลีหลังจากสงครามที่บ้านเมืองเอ่อถูกทําลายจนไม่เหลือที่ดีแล้วก็เราก็จะยึดสู้ด้วยกันแล้วก็เดินไปด้วยกันไม่ทําไมไม่ทอดทิ้งกันไม่ทอดทิ
The most important thing we need to do to prevent war and maintain peace is not to forget the memories of the past wars. How terrible the choice of war over peace has had.